And hello there folks, this is Uncle Troy with another C Word update. For those of you not familiar, this is not one of my happy-go-lucky fun and games videos. This is a more serious video. There will be some fun parts, but mostly this is about a very serious subject. So if you came here looking for fun and games and you want to click away, go to a different video, I will not be offended at all. Thank you for checking out the video. I'll see you elsewhere. Bye. Okay, today we are drinking uh, strawberry lemonade. Sugar-free, of course. And it's a little tart and a little hard on my throat, but it tastes so good. I've been drinking a lot of water, and so anything with flavor in it is an improvement. So, uh, for those of you who haven't been keeping up, uh, I was diagnosed about uh, two months ago with uh, stage 4 colon cancer. have a large mass in my rectum, a polyp in my ascending colon, and... Uh, bunch of lymph nodes and um, nothing to do here by the way that was just something in my eye. sorry a uh, bunch of lymph nodes a few spots in my liver several spots in both lungs uh, and they've not actually done a biopsy on any of the spots in my lymph nodes or liver or lungs it's just after finding uh, colon cancer in two different places in my colon they uh, if I had a thumbnail right now they'd say that was colon cancer just for the record if I had a hangnail rather hangnail can you see that never mind Okay, so big news this week is I've gone back to see both of my doctors, my cancer doctor and my surgeon, and in fact I've seen my uh, regular diabetic doctor as well. Uh, the diabetic doctor figured out what was wrong with some of my dizziness, vertigo, can't stand up, was my blood sugar, excuse me, my blood pressure was too low. And so basically since I've got a little check it at home meter, uh, not 100% accurate, you know, not hospital grade, but, you know, just something we got out of a catalog. But it's good enough that they could tell me when my blood pressure was low that day, don't take my blood pressure medicine, which is something that you're not supposed to do, by the way. You're supposed to take your blood pressure medicine every single day. This is special orders from my doctor on me. I went to my cancer doctor who did a regular exam, just poked and prodded, and decided I was healthy enough for the next round of chemotherapy. Uh, everything I've done so far was the first course of, well, first round or something. Basically, I had chemo for a few days, a couple of weeks off, uh, chemo for another couple of days, a couple of weeks off, and that was the first round or the first course or first something, first treatment, whatever, collectively. And then I'm going to start the same thing again next week. Uh, a couple of days of chemo, a week off, a couple of days of chemo. And that'll be the second round or course or whatever. And then collectively, that is the first treatment or something like that. So basically, I'm, you know, like four different stages over eight different days or something. And all that comes to my first whatever. And then I believe after that, we're going to do some more CTs, x-rays, whatever, and see if we've made any difference in the cancer and then plan accordingly. But... Uh, apparently I'm healthy enough to start the next round. In fact, uh, pretty much all the bad things that happened to me after the first couple days of chemo did not happen during the second set of chemo. So my body is maybe adjusting to it, uh, building a tolerance sort of thing, which uh, really, really, really uh, is good news that I'm developing some kind of tolerance to this because uh, I had a few bad days after that first round of chemo. And uh, according to what I've read on the internet, and if you have cancer, do not read the internet. Just, just, that's it. That's my advice to you. If you have cancer, don't read the internet. According to the internet, some people, you know, develop a tolerance to the chemo, and the first, the first batch hurts them a lot, second batch not as bad, and after that, it's no problem. Other people, however, as the chemotherapy treatments go on, develop a sensitivity to the chemo, and every round of chemo hits them harder than the round before and I was very very afraid that that would happen with me um, and apparently it didn't and we're ready for the next uh, round of chemo starting next Monday in fact I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set this video to upload on Monday so when you read this I'll be having my first uh, round of chemo okay uh, the other thing I did this week was I went to my surgeon the surgeon's office uh, about this port here now you can see here, we've got us a little pump knot here, where my finger is, that's about the size of a 2-liter bottle cap. And we've got this nice little scar. 
that I keep moving my fingers in the wrong direction because this is not a mirror. But anyway, we got the scar here, and I've been seeing the surgeons, I've been going back to the surgeon's office uh, every two weeks after the surgery. I had the port put in. This is a power port. Uh, basically, there's a funny hooked needle that goes in there, and that way they don't have to try to find veins in the back of my hands or in the elbows or whatever. Uh, when it comes to the veins in my elbows, a long, long time ago, a uh, EMT or paramedic, I forget which one, one of the guys that rides in the ambulances, on a slow weekend at the hospital, tried to find a vein, popped a, put a tourniquet on my arm, popped around, and basically said if I was ever in a car wreck and he was on the scene, I would wake up with an IV in my neck because he could not find a vein that he trusted for an IV. And since chemotherapy can burn out the veins, uh, they wanted to put in a port, and this actually comes up here. Uh, you can see a little bitty spot right here, I think, and I've got a little feeling of something right underneath the surface there. Uh, this is where they had to come up into my jugular vein and then down into my heart. Uh, it's supposed to go into the subclavian vein, which is right here underneath the clavicle. This is the, your clavicle, your collarbone here. But my subclavian vein wasn't in the right spot and said they hit an artery. So they had to back out, try again with the jugular vein. And I can feel a little something under the surface here. It feels like a little round tube, uh, but the doctor at the, can't, at the surgery center assures me that I'm not feeling the tubing. The tubing's actually much lower down. What I'm feeling is some uh, scar tissue that formed from the incision they made up here and was digging around. And so I should just rub a little lotion on that every day and it'll soften it up. Because that kind of concerned me because it felt like the tubing that was running into my heart was like right underneath the surface. But apparently it's, it's down much deeper, so I'm safe. But every two weeks I went to see them. Uh, you know, I had the surgery. Two weeks later I went be checked up on, see if I was healed enough to return to work, because they said don't work while you're doing this, don't lift anything, don't move this arm above your head, okay. So, you know, don't, a bunch of don'ts basically. So I went back two weeks after the surgery, and uh, they said I wasn't healed up enough to return to work yet, or lift my arm, or do any heavy lifting or whatever, you know, give it a little bit more time. So. Two weeks more went by. I went in, saw the doctor, uh, poked and prodded and said, uh, yeah, it's healing nicely, really uh, impressive how fast you're healing, but let's give it two more weeks before you go back to work. And so the third time, I think six weeks after the surgery, when I went in, I wasn't even getting my hopes up. And in fact, uh, at the four-week mark, uh, don't tell the guys at work this, but I actually brought uniform. I brought a uniform with me and kept it out in the truck when I went in to see the doctor so that if she signed off and said you're ready to go back to work I could show up in uniform at work with a sign of you know a paper that said ready to go back to work and I'd maybe work half a day or whatever because I was I was really ready to go to work back then uh, but this last time I, I come in I, I didn't even get my hopes up it had been you know two weeks four weeks now we're six weeks and so she poked, prodded, said I'm, it's settling in nicely and is healed over and I'm ready to send you back to work without restrictions. And I'm like, really? I can go back to work without, I can go back to work right now? And she says, well, give it another few days. You need to work up your, uh, work on your endurance. I want you to spend the weekend walking and, and activity because going back to work is going to take a lot out of you. You may not be even be able to do it. But as far as the uh, port's concerned, you're ready to go back to work. So back to work as of Monday. Monday, July 15th, which is when I'm going to put this uh, video up for uh, for your viewing pleasure. The uh, hilarious thing was that I had just come from the cancer doctor who wants to start the next round of chemotherapy on Monday, July 17th, and I'll be hooked up to a pump for a couple days, so I won't be able to work. And then, depending on how the chemo hits me, I may feel sick for a few days after that, so I may not be able to work until then. And so I had to go into work, explain to my boss exactly, you know, what both doctors had told me and how I'm cleared to work, but I can't work, uh, which confused him. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have given him the good news, bad news thing. I should have just explained it all out ahead of time. But instead, I said, the good news is I'm cleared to work Monday. The bad news is I have to be in chemotherapy Monday. And he got, huh? How are you going to work while you're in chemotherapy? So that is, you know, that's that. Uh, basically, if I can tolerate the chemotherapy, I might be back to work, you know, 
next week sometime. If I don't tolerate the chemotherapy, then I may be off a few more days. Uh, I really hope I can go back to work. Uh, I have this thing in my head where if I'm not there, I think things aren't going right. And this is, uh, this is, this is nothing against the people I work with. I work with a bunch of really, really cool people. And they're really confident. They can do what they're supposed to do. But it's something psychological with me up here that if I'm not there, I'm afraid it's not being done correctly. I'm afraid it's not being done properly. I'm afraid it's not being done as well as I could do it. Uh, even if I'm just working with somebody who knows more about a certain thing than I do and is better at it than I do, I think they do a better job while I'm there. <laughs> okay, uh, Megalomania is what some people have called this. But basically, in the past, if I've had a couple of weeks off, in the middle of the the couple of weeks off, I might hop in for a few hours, just just show up at work and help out a little, just off the clock, just because I can't imagine how things are going without me. I have to go in and check on them. I have to go in there and put in my two cents about this project, or you know, help out a little with this, just off the books, just be there. And somehow, I think the hospital runs better when I'm there. And having gone six weeks now, it'd be nearly seven before I can first day I can possibly go back I feel like the hospital must be falling apart because I'm not there to help them and so I'm really really looking forward to going back to work just so I can ease that little voice in my mind saying you know they're they're messing up they need your help Troy they can't do it without you even though they have assured me that they're fine without me they can do this they miss me I'm an important part of the team but they can make it without me for a few weeks months, years, however long it takes me to get over this. So I really appreciate that they're willing to help out and uh, that they're willing to, you know, to cover for me. Uh, people have been working extra shifts. People have had to put off their vacations to cover for me, and I really appreciate that. And I'm really hoping I can go back to work uh, this coming week. All right, so we covered the blood pressure thing, which I may have covered in a previous video. I know I've covered it on Facebook. Uh, the port, once again, we're settled in is the official medical term and uh, next round of chemo starting and like I said once this chemo couple weeks off more chemo then I think is the point where we're going to take more CTs x-rays whatever and see what what effect if any we've had so I think that brings us up to date so thank you for watching this is Uncle Troy signing out please have a good night